What's going on YouTube? How's it going people? Well, it's Sunday. 7.45 in the morning. Well, let's just say the other day I went to go and snow blow the driveway because we got a boatload of snow. Yes, we did. I'm making a coffee right now. I just got home from work about I'd say 40 minutes ago. I did the uh, 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. shift there and uh, yeah well let me show you what we got out here so as you can see we got a lot of snow we got a lot of snow we got snow yeah yeah this happened in one day two two days I should say and the other day what happened was was it Friday night no it was Friday morning, uh, anyway, I got home at 7 a.m. Friday, went to bed, got up, we we got blanketed, we got just doused with snow, uh, they called for 10 centimeters, but that's, they were off by like 20 centimeters, because we got about a good foot and a bit, so I woke up at 5 o'clock Friday afternoon, because I got off at 7 a.m., Woke up at 5 o'clock Friday afternoon, and what did I see but a snowbank that was about 3 feet high at the end of the driveway. That's right, a full meter of snow at the end of the driveway. I didn't feel like putting her in 4x4 four four and R and slamming her in reverse. Lately the neighbor's been parking his car on the side of the road, and I'm, that's kind of bothering me. I don't like when he does that, because in the winter the roads get pretty narrow. And when you park on the side of the road and narrow streets, it means only one car can go. When I'm back in the truck out, I gotta be extra careful that I don't make him into a new trailer hitch ornament. So, I figured I better get out there and blast the driveway, right? Well, that's when I noticed a problem. And the problem I noticed was. The snow blower wasn't blowing snow as much as pushing snow. It was still shooting some out of the auger, or the auger, out of the chute, but it was like it wasn't getting mulched into the auger and sent into the impeller to fly. It was just magically making its way there. So I was like, well, what's going on? So I got in front of the machine and I used my shop broom that I used to clean off the auger after I'm done uh, snow blowing to push down the auger handle. And I noticed at that point only the, if I'm looking at the snowblower, the right side. If you're behind it, the left side auger was spinning. The right one was seized, like it's, it's stuck. So it was still moving snow. It's just if we get any sloppy snow, it ain't going to move it. That's, that's the end of it. So... I got confused as of this, so I was like, well, whatever, I finished the driveway with the one auger chugging snow back, and then uh, once it was all said and done, I brought it into the garage, shut her down, removed the spark plug, because, you know, you never know, these things, they work like lawnmowers, right? You know, if I spin the auger, and she does spin, and it's enough to make the uh, impeller spin, and spin the engine over, and the gas in there could start up, and you know, rip your hand clean off your arm. That would not be a good time. Disconnected the spark plug, grab the auger, and it is seized. It's like one with the machine. So I'm like, uh oh, what's going on? How do I fix this now? So I looked online, and everybody's saying shear pins, shear pins. Yes, the shear pin is gone. But when I blew the shear pins, on the Arians after I sucked up that stupid crazy carpet and she just, you know, wrecked itself. The, um... When, once I cleared the, the auger of all crazy carpet material, that, that foam carpet material, I could grab the augers and spin them and they'd spin on the shaft, no problem. This, however, the shear bolt's missing. It's, I checked, the pin's gone. So I gotta go to Cambodian Tire and pick up a shear bolt, uh, pack of shear bolts for that specific machine because the ones for the Arians are too wide, they won't fit. Um, I bought six of them for the Arians back in the day, used two, have four left. They, I, I tried to put one in, 
it won't fit the hole. It's too wide. So I'm going to have to go to Cambodian Tire and pick some up. They're cheap. They're like five bucks for six. I say they're cheap, but that's five dollars for six bolts is kind of expensive, especially a bolt that's designed to break versus a bolt that's designed to hold weight. I don't know the logic behind it, but I'm probably sure there's some and I'm just not thinking of it. I'm pretty tired right now, so what I'm going to do is um, they open at 9. I figure we'll go out, do our running around, get what we need. That's why I made a coffee to wake up a little bit. Get out there to get our running around, get what we need, come home, have a nap, and then uh, get out into the garage and uh, see what we can do to fix that snowblower. And I figure I'll make a video of it because if I can't figure it out, what I'm doing wrong, Maybe one of you guys, I know a lot of you guys out there, you are into this kind of stuff, into fixing this stuff and salvaging it and selling it on Kijiji and making some money. Uh, I know there was a guy back in the day, Pepper Cat Keith, he's big on this stuff. I don't know if he still watches me, but if he does, maybe he can chime up. But I did some research, and a lot of people said what happens with these... Craftsman, MTD, Yard Machine, all these like Walmart, Canadian Tire, Sears branded Craftsmans, they all have the same fault and that's a water gets into the shaft area between the shaft and the auger's, um, I guess, mounting point, like the hollowed out auger section and causes the shaft to rust and the rust binds to the shaft causing it to seize now in my idea for this if that was the case wouldn't it cause the shaft to seize to the actual auger therefore without a cotter pin or cotter um i just called it a shear bolt a shear pin without a shear pin the shaft would still spin to me what's happening is I, I could be wrong I don't know if there's an actual bearing that the shaft said the shaft let's say not the shaft let's say the um, the augers the auger sits on I'm thinking that bearing is seized and the shaft is free spinning because if it wasn't free spinning it would have wrecked the worm gear right in my mind it would have wrecked that brass gear on the inside that spins the shaft it looks like a drill bit that comes off the main shaft and goes into the t-brace and that drill bit spins both shafts for each side I'm saying shaft a lot I'm expecting jokes in the comment about shaft okay I apologize but um, if the shaft itself was uh, seized, wouldn't it make a serious noise like metal on metal patinging sound or grinding or you know like someone who just learned how to drive a manual forgot about the clutch and tried to force her into second and you know that sound it's not doing that though it runs it starts you engage the auger the one side turns on I'll show you guys um, after once we come back from Cambodian tire and uh, like right now I got the uh, the one snowblower the uh, the green one up on Kijiji for sale but I might be pulling that ad boys because this is a costly fix I don't have the money to put money towards fixing this friggin thing and selling it to buy parts uh, selling the green one to buy parts to fix the red one yeah, I don't know about that. Like, I'm getting some serious... Oh, man. I got a story for you guys. When we go to Canadian Tire, I'm going to tell you this story. And I'm telling you right now, Kijiji, I hate selling things on Kijiji, boys. I hate it so much. Anyway, I'm going upstairs. I'm watching a movie called Ex Machinima. I'm just finishing it. I started it yesterday before I left for work. I'm going to finish it, drink my coffee, and then we're going to head out to Canadian Tire. And I'll tell you more about this nonsense. Well, I just made a colossal mistake, guys. It's currently 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I went and laid down. I was like, oh, I'll just set my alarm to wake me up at 11. So I figured, let's uh, not go right away at 9. I was getting kind of tired. And I really needed sleep. So I figured, oh, I'll set my alarm to wake me up at 11. 
Set it for 11 p.m., not a.m. Son of a... You know, and that's one problem with working these night shifts is... If you got shit to do... Son of a bitch! If you got shit to do during the day, you uh, kind of can't get it done. Unless you sacrifice sleep, because you don't want to go to bed as soon as you get home at 7, because... Then you just don't wake up. I knocked over my ratchet set that I had sitting on top of that stupid computer. I really gotta do a scrap run one of these days. Get rid of all these old computers that are garbage. But uh, yeah, you don't want to go to bed as soon as you get home at 7. Because then you'll be up at around like 3. And then you're going to be awake till 7 o'clock the next day. That's like, like brutal. Anyway, I'm going to let the dog out before we go to Canadian Tire. Okay, like I said, I've got a story for you about me trying to sell this green snowblower. That's uh, pretty stupid. I know I hate selling things on Kijiji, people. I hate it so much. I love how no matter what vehicle I own, whatever, whatever vehicle I own, the driver's side of the vehicle, the wiper is always so screwed up compared to the passenger side. Like, right now the passenger side of the window, super clear. Driver's side, super not. From the wipers, doesn't matter. <sighs> Whatever. Let's get off to uh, Cambodian Tire. Oh, maybe in Canada we should start riding on the right side of the vehicle because you can't see anything out of the left. This is ridiculous. I don't understand that. Like, is it because people pass on the left and that's why you can't see out of this side of the window? Or is it because the wiper that they put on the left is always a piece of junk? Like, honestly, I can't see anything right now. One second, I'm gonna go snap my wiper. Oh, maybe I should buy a new freaking wiper for it. You know, it's only brand new. First winter. get it. I really don't get it boys. I wonder if people in the UK have the opposite effect. If they sit on the right side and go, oh I wish we rode on the left side because our driver's side wipers are just complete bollocks. Because let me tell you, in Canada here, our driver's side wipers are complete bollocks. Don't do anything. Garbage. But that's not what I'm, uh, that's not the story I want to talk about. What I want to talk about is Kijiji and why it's a piece of crap and I hate selling things on it because people on there are freaking idiots. So I decided, you know what? I want to clear out some space in the garage. Let's sell the green snowblower, right? Let's put her up on Kijiji, get rid of it, make some money. Make some space in the garage too. So I posted it for 300 bucks. I figured, you know, other people are selling snowblowers on there, smaller and worse condition for like four or 500 bucks. Well, let's undercut them, my first mistake, and offer it for 300. And if I get 250, I'll take it. Well, on Kijiji, see, people will offer you everything. They'll offer you a boatload less money, trades, you know, stupid stuff like that. Like you're asking, like this, and this is what happened. Um, this one person offered me, 
$150. Delivered. I'll get, and this is exactly how they said it. Okay, what are you doing, you dummy? My goodness. Why does North Bay have to have the dumbest drivers on the planet? So what they do is, uh, they're like, 150 bucks delivered. I'm like, uh, no, no delivery. Like, I don't care if I own a truck, people. I, I'm not delivering. I'm not giving it to you for half the price and then dropping it off at your house. I'm not going out of my way. I'm not in that hurry of a, of a uh, want to sell it. Which is good because now I actually need it and that's what happened. I pulled the ad after the red one broke saying, thinking, okay, well, listen, this is gonna, I don't know what's wrong with the red one, so I better not sell my only backup because that's just kicking myself in the face because it might cost me, like, if, I, if it's the gearbox that shot, and I have to replace the whole auger system, that's a $300 replacement. I really, really, really don't want to have to sell a perfectly working snowblower just to buy parts to fix this one here. When I got a perfectly working snowblower, you know? Like, it doesn't make sense, especially because nobody wants to pay the full 300. All they want to do is lowball, so it would end up still costing me money to fix my currently not working snowblower. So I pulled the ad. Well, then I get a, a, an email back from uh, this person for 150. And they're like, okay, uh, they're like, hey, do you still have the snowblower? Like the ad's pulled, so they're just replying to the email that they sent me in the beginning. Uh, me, me basically replying back saying, no, um, I want at least 250 for it. So then they reply, $200 delivered. And I replied back and said, uh, actually the ad's been pulled. Uh, I currently need the snowblower for this season. You know, sorry for any inconvenience. Well, they responded back and said, fine, $300. I'll pay the full asking price, but I demand a warrant. I demand a warranty. Demand, like, like they have a leg to stand on. Like, you, you better give me a warranty and tell me that this is not going to break at all throughout this winter. It's going to work all winter. I want... Uh, this season warranty and I replied back and said unfortunately with used sales is as is where is there is no warranty things happen and on top of that I am not selling it uh, it's not for sale I actually need it like I stated in the original email uh, the ad's been removed well then they come back to me and say uh, this is not proper Kachiji sales um, you should not have removed the ad. You should have still had it up there. Uh, you need to notify your the people buying, blah, blah, blah. Just acting like they're so entitled. Like, I did something wrong. I'm like, listen, I pulled the ad. It's not for sale. I actually need it because my current one broke. It's the way she goes. Then they come back to me and say, well, just to let you know, if I have a heart attack while I'm out there shoveling snow, I want you to know that I'm holding you responsible. And, you know, hopefully that helps you sleep better at night. And I replied back and said, listen, what the hell's wrong with you? It's not for sale. Let it go. Find another one. So on and so forth. Then they reply back and go, I am contacting Kijiji's... Uh, uh, admin, uh, G -G, uh, Kijiji's admin services to have your abilities to sell items on their site revoked because of this behavior. Blah, 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 blah. I'm an entitled person. Give me, give me, give me. Like, just resorting to, like, the utmost amount of stupidity because I wouldn't sell them the product that I don't have on there anymore because it's not for freaking sale anymore because I may need it. If I don't need it, I'll post it back up. But right now, I need the friggin' thing, so it's like, wow. Some people, and this is why I hate selling stuff on Kijiji, because it's always the same crap. You got people contacting you, offering you like 60% less than what you're offering, uh, what you want to sell it for. Or, I shouldn't say 60% less, 50% less than what you want to sell it for. 
Then you got the uh, the idiots who contact you and be like, oh, you want like a Game Boy for it? I got a Game Boy. Maybe I'll trade you a Nintendo Entertainment System that doesn't work or like stupid stuff. Like here's a pack. I have a, a nice fishing package for the weekend. You want to go sit in a cabin and freeze your tits off and catch fish? Like, no, I really don't want to do that. Like, if I really wanted to do that, I'd probably go and do that, but it's not what I want to do. Like, they just offer the dumbest things. Or they ask you like a thousand questions about it. Or they send you the generic template. Is this still available and what's the lowest offer you'll let me have it for? Then I go, yes, it's still available in 250. And they're like, that's a rip off. I could buy a brand new one right now at Sears because they're going out of business. It's like, well, then why didn't you try there first? Oh, right. Because they have none left. Because they're going out of business. Everything's 70% off. And the first thing that moved after the big blizzard that occurred, where's the snowblowers? So quit saying you're going to go to Sears and buy a new one. Because you can't. Because guess what? There's none left at Sears. You dumb shits. <laughs> like... Oh my god. Yeah, Kijiji, man. Place is a cesspool. Hate selling things on Kijiji. So I was kind of hoping my buddy Pierre was going to buy it this, this uh, past summer, but he didn't. Anyway, I'm at Cambodian Tire. Sorry for my negative rant, but man, that just pissed me off when that, when that all that went down uh, a couple days ago. Just really pissed me off. Anyway, I'm gonna grab my stuff and I'll talk to you guys at home. Peace. All right, I'm back home. Thank God that's over with. You know, my number one tip for how not to get sick at Christmas time or in the winter time or at any time is pretty simple. Avoid going to places where the public is because the public is dirty. And there's a lot of sick people out there that'll go shopping even when they're sick with fevers with the flu because they need to get their fix. Anyway, that Canadian Tire, bought some engine oil. Might need some for the green machine. Remember I had to tilt it up when I was fixing the underbelly. And she lost a little bit of, uh, of juice. Got some grease. Got some performance penetrating oil. And last but not least, Got some shear pins. Now, let me show you here. Here she be. Now, theoretically, if your shear pin's shot, you should be able to grab this and spin it, right? Well, it doesn't move. It doesn't move at all. Now, uh, she seized in there, and I don't know why. Like this one here has a shear pin, and you can do this. This one here, nothing! Don't know what the problem is. So, what I did the other day, was I just did one of these, where I tilted it up, rested it on its handlebars, and I was looking around in here and I noticed, oh, oh there's no shear pin here. Well, this ain't good, right? Actually, no, well, that's fine. I just, oh god, I just don't understand why it won't spin. There's no shear pin in there now, so it should be spinning free. But it's not. So, I looked online to see if anybody had any solutions, and everybody's like, oh, it's because you're missing your shear pin, it won't spin free. Well, oh man. And this is what I hate about filming things, people, because you always need two hands to do the job. But I just uh, blasted it with a torch, and I noticed something. If you look on this side here, it's pretty much weighed up against the thing. If you look on this side here, you can see it looks like the bearing slipped out. Maybe that bearing exploded on this side. Maybe that's the case, I don't know. But luckily, I still have old Nasty over there to use. So yeah, it's definitely not for sale anymore. I'm going to keep both because I can't get a reliable piece of shit to work. Hey, there we go. Well, whatever. I put a whole bunch of penetrating oil into it. I got a poo, so I'm heading in the house. We'll get her fixed. And if not, well, like I said, we still have that one. So yeah, I haven't been filming. I just talked off the phone with Dad. 
he's like, well, yeah, I can come over sometime in the new year, and, <sighs> yeah. Oh, I went and took a poo, guys. I came back out here because I was going to make a video for YouTube to see if anybody had any suggest <laughs> suggestions. Then I talked to Dad, and Dad was like, well, it's only two things, right? It's got to be the bearing or the gearbox. Well, the gearbox works, obviously. So it's going to be the bearing. So what I did was I extracted the three bolts on this side, as you can tell. And the moment I did that, look what happened. Look. It, okay, it's hitting the back right now because it's not bolted on, so it's off-center. But it spins. The moment I disconnected it. So I'm thinking this bearing assembly over here needs to be replaced. Now, I looked online, and it looks like they're about 35 to 40 bucks. So I guess I'll have to wait until tomorrow and call Hamlin's and see if they have any in stock and get one. But uh, luckily, we're supposed to get a whole boatload of snow. I got this thing going to get a little bit of warmth in here because Jesus Murphy, it's freaking cold in here. And uh, yeah, so we are getting a lot of snow outside. A lot more freaking winter. And they're calling for another 12 to 24 centimeters tomorrow. Friggin' winter, boys. It sucks. Unless you got a sled and you like sledding. I tried to put a cotter print or a shear. I keep calling them cotter prints. Shear pin in there and I couldn't get it to fit. Well, now it should because you can see clear through it. But before, I was like, why is it not, not going through? So I'm getting in there up close and I grabbed the camera and did a zoom. Should have recorded. And I'm like, wait a second. And I can see like metal and then the circle and the metal. And I'm like, don't you friggin' tell me the shear pin's still in there. Yep. You see all that muck and guck all over the bottom there? That's what it was. I used, uh, <laughs> I don't own any punches, okay? So, bear with me. I used a, uh, basically a, I used a nail and a hammer and pounded it out. So, okay, I'm going to finish attaching my bearing over here. And then I'm going to reattach the auger, fire it up. Hopefully we got action. Alrighty, well I know I screwed up by not showing what it was doing, but let's see if it actually works now. Alright. Get her back here. Actually, I gotta go take a look at the camera to make sure I'm still getting the shot. To make sure I'm still getting the shot. I'm still getting the shot. Alright, it's fired up. Uh, let me just uh, turn the old auger away from the camera so I don't give it a snow job. because I got her on full choke and she didn't want that kind anymore but that was just a test to see if she'd fire and I fixed it also forgot to show the part where turn this thing off because I don't need it anymore um, I forgot to show the part where I greased it uh, I used I don't know if I'm supposed to use this for this but uh, I used lithium grease I don't know it's who makes it three in one Hmm, whatever. So I used that stuff on it. And the penetrating oil was this 3-in-1 penetrating oil. Um, which I lost the lid for. No, I put the lid for the penetrating oil on the grease. <sighs> Some people's children. Okay, so we're good. It's fixed for now. Theoretically, we can sell the green one again. Don't want to deal with that nonsense. Don't want to deal with the idiots of Kijiji. That'll be a story for another day. Anyway, people, my feet are killing me. I want to get out of that garage, get into the house, and warm up. Maybe get a cup of coffee into me or something. Because uh, I don't know how you go outside with no boots on, dog. 
My tootsies are freezing. Hey, you go outside and you kangaroo up and squat a loaf. Never freaking understand it, dog. Oh, my feet are frozen. Anywho, people, that's my video for today. Snowblower is fixed. Life goes on. My next day off. I don't know when it's going to be. We'll see. Probably Christmas Eve. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I need the money, so it's fine. But thanks for watching, people. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Uh, I know, I was a little grouchy this morning, but that's what happens when you haven't slept in forever. Uh, yeah, because I literally got home, or I woke up at 8 p.m. on Friday, went to work 11 to 7 a.m., and then I had to sleep 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., and I just couldn't fall asleep for the life of me. And I went to work, tired as all piss, um, worked 12 hours on no sleep, and then came home. <sighs> Sorry about that, people. I didn't mean to make you parasitically yawn, but um, no, I came home at 7 a.m. I uh, went, what time does Can uh, Canadian Tire open at? Looked it up and went, ah, oh, crap, they open at 9. So I was like, well, if I go to bed now at 7 a.m. on this much lack of sleep, I'm going to be awake at like 5. Luckily, I went and laid down and watched Star Trek, and I woke up at like 1. So I still had a chance to go to Canadian Tire and pick up the parts, which is good. And I'm going to be honest, I was getting discouraged out there working on it. I was like, oh, I don't feel like doing this, and it's cold, and blah, blah, blah. Trying to find excuses to quit, but you know what? If I would have done that and just resorted to using the green one, which, you know, would have worked fine. In the end, I would have had a broken snowblower still. Like, might as well see it all the way through, right? While the weather's not too bad. Like, it's minus 10 degrees Celsius out there, which... That ain't too shabby. It's when it's minus 25. That's when you don't want to be in the garage spinning wrenches because they're even made of metal and it's cold. So, anyway, people, I'm going to shut her down here. So, hopefully, you enjoyed this video. Uh, sorry for being grouchy. It's what happens when I don't get enough sleep or food or sleep and food. Food and sleep, whatever. Uh, hopefully, you enjoyed it. Click the like button. Any questions, comments, concerns, down below the go. And until next time, people, keep on vlogging.